So it was 11 years ago that we launched Create in the Hunterian Museum. And it was the launch of a complex consortium. Seven universities were involved. And at that time, would I have believed that we are still here today? That we are now in the ARC, the university's new interdisciplinary flagship? I'm not sure it was inevitable. But we made it. We are here. And Anton is here again. So uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to reflect and, and celebrate um, 12 years of our life. So we were part of the first round of center investments by the AHRC. So Arts and Humanities before that time didn't really think of large centers with a policy dimension. The first round of, of large center investments are, is from that time and we are the first, uh, the only center of the first round which is still standing today. And we are also the only center which was cross-council funded from HRC EPSRC and ESRC. So the interdisciplinarity was, was built into it. And today we are at the beginning of another first. We are now uh, part of the essential UK research infrastructure. Again, the HRC has made a first step into a new, more sustainable direction of developing uh, the research infrastructure for the UK. And we are part of the first round again. And you know, we would like to thank you um, as the funders you know, for your foresight and, 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 and confidence. Speaking of firsts, um, there are some colleagues here who were already here at the inception of CREATE. Um, Philip Schlesinger, my deputy, 12 years. We have Diane McGrattan who is, uh, was the employee number one of CREATE <laughs> and is still the uh, you know, administrator who holds uh, us together. And we had Lillian Edwards, she may have drifted to the back, Lillian Edwards, uh, who was the first deputy director of the consortium when she was uh, a professor at Strathclyde. So it's fantastic to have this kind of community and, and, and support here today. So in 2012, Create's agenda was set by a call for a national center for copyright and new business models in the creative economy. It was the HRC's response to the digital crisis. Um, the digital crisis could be uh, conceived as a kind of challenge to the uh, production and consumption of, of culture. Um, and it affected first the music industry, uh, then film, publishing, essentially the, the, uh, over time the entire creative sector. Um, and in that context, uh, there were, were almost vicious uh, arguments um, between right holders, unruly technology firms, um, creators, unruly consumers. There was a piracy debate. And this investment was an attempt to, to insert some evidence into this field um, and um, promote the uh, an innovation agenda for the creative industries in the UK. So the digital genie was out of the bottle and um, the legal distinctions between uh, private and public, between original and a copy, did no longer work as they used to. But there was also a sense of optimism New industries were being created, games, social media, and there were opportunities for new approaches to open knowledge, particularly in the what's called the glam sector, galleries, libraries, archives, museums. Um, so we, we were in a, in, a, in a digital crisis, but there was also a sense of, of optimism that it could be solved. Today, we are in a quite different world. So we are in a world dominated by big tech and uh, culture wars, real wars, and uh, the challenges of digital re regulation are now at, at a quite different level. They're, they're questions of, of, of national sovereignty. And this ha has added a layer to any creative economy discussion which is, wasn't there before. And we've seen that today in our, our roundtable discussion with the UK regulators. Uh, we, we, 
which spoke really to, to, to some of, of these issues. Um, and I would like to thank Ofcom and the Competition and Markets Authority, Intellectual Property Office, and um, we also had uh, some politicians there and board members, so it was an insightful discussion. This widening agenda and its urgency is um, reflected in Create's new footprint, which starts really today. So our, our scope has now extended to competition and technology law. It uh, is also reflected in the appointment of two new deputy directors, which are also here, I'm sure. Here we've got uh, Magali Eben, uh, competition law lead, and Chris Erickson, social data science. So we have now interdisciplinary expertise in-house um, in, in a new way, um, which is really what is required to address some of these questions I just uh, listed. So copyright will remain the anchor, an important anchor for what we do. As we can see, for example, in the unresolved status of training data for, 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 a, for machine learning, for AI, um, it's not going to go away. However, we cannot address some of these bigger questions without widening our expertise. Um, and um, I have every confidence that our fantastic young team will be able to change the evidence-based legal and regulatory understanding um, for the creative economy. Thank you very much.